Okay, and uh, welcome everybody to our Water, Waste and Food Virtual Market 20 Program uh, Nordic Showcase session today. Uh, we are still waiting a few speakers to join in, uh, so we're going to give them a couple of minutes before we start. But while doing that, uh, let's do a quick recap about the housekeeping matters as usual. Uh, please note that all the participants are automatically muted. And uh, for our speakers uh, and the panelists, then um, please keep yourself muted if you're not presenting or asking questions. Uh, we do have a time allocated for the Q&A at the end, and you can ask questions from our Nordic participants by using the Q&A function. Uh, please remember also to indicate to whom your question is for. Uh, we are also recording this session, and then the recording and all the presentation decks will be shared with all the participants in 24 hours. And uh, we will still keep a couple of minutes for the uh, the rest of the people join before we start. So thanks for being here early and thanks for your patience. Okay, and now we have all the needed people here. Um, good, let's start then. Good afternoon uh, to our Nordic friends uh, back home in the Nordics and our friends of Nordics here in Singapore and Southeast Asia. My name is Sami Askelan from Nordic Innovation House and I'll be your host today. So it is my great pleasure to warmly welcome you all, our Water, Waste and Food Virtual Market Entry Program uh, session with IPI and the Enterprise Singapore, where we are having an excellent and very exciting group showcase of selected Nordic companies. Uh, quickly, some house rules, uh, housekeeping matters before we start. Uh, please note that all the participants are automatically muted. And for our presenters, uh, please keep yourself muted uh, uh, unless you are uh, presenting or asking questions. We do have a time allocated for the Q&A session at the end, but uh, whenever you have uh, questions for our presenters today, uh, you can post those questions uh, to the Q&A uh, section. Uh, please also then remember, remember to indicate to whom your question is for. Um, please note that this session will be recorded and we will be uh, sending you the recording and all the presentation decks uh, in 24 hours after this session. Good, but let's start then and have a quick look at our agenda today. So we will have a very brief introduction from the Nordic Innovation House to start. And after that, uh, we will hear IPI introductions and we are very happy to have Lunne, uh, Lunne Lowe, the Senior Manager from the Strategic Partnership side with us today. And after that, we're gonna hand over to, uh, to Terence Tail from Enterprise Singapore. And then after these uh, introductions, we're going to hand over the stage uh, to nine Nordic companies. Uh, they are all presenting uh, seven minutes each. And then at the end, uh, we still have some time for the Q&A. And like I mentioned, uh, feel free to post your questions to the, uh, uh, the companies uh, uh, using the Q&A uh, function. Good. So we do have a lot of uh, new friends with us today. Uh, so I'm just going to very briefly cover a little bit uh, Nordic Innovation House activities here in Singapore. So essentially we are uh, what we call as a community platform which aims to support and help and accelerate high quality Nordic tech startups and scale-ups and growth companies that are coming to Singapore. And of course, many of them are using Singapore as a springboard then for the broader Southeast Asia market. 
We are supported by uh, the Nordic Innovation, and we are actually very uh, unique collaboration between the Nordic countries. Uh, our journey actually started from Silicon Valley, uh, followed by New York, and then uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, and Tokyo. So we have currently five offices uh, in these very, very vibrant uh, ecosystems globally to provide support then for the Nordic companies. Uh, our daily work is, I would say, quite industry agnostic, but then we have a very clear focus on uh, certain verticals. And uh, that's also the reason why we are here today. And under these uh, focus areas, we are running these virtual market entry programs and uh, bringing uh, virtually Nordic companies then to Singapore and meet uh, relevant uh, key stakeholders in these ecosystems. If you want to want to find out more about our activities and programs, uh, you can check our website or you can then uh, reach me or my colleague Jackie uh, out either today or later on. Um, so you will hear today uh, exciting presentations from nine Nordic companies. And then if you want to continue the dialogue and conversation with them, you can book uh, a meeting uh, with them by using this uh, meeting scheduler. Uh, we're going to post the link here on the chat very soon. Or then alternatively, you can also contact the IPI team or Enterprise Singapore team and the email addresses are here. And also we will be posting these on the chat uh, later on today. But uh, now, without any further ado, I would like to hand over the stage to Lunne Lo, a Senior Manager from IPI. Lunne, over to yeah, you. Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Sami. Um, very good afternoon to uh, our attendees from Singapore and a good morning to our participants from the Nordics. My name is Lynn from IPI and it's a pleasure to partner the Nordic Innovation House in this event and be invited to share on the matching platforms that IPI offers to support your growth through co-innovation partnerships. So let me uh, try to share my slides now. Okay, just a quick check. Can everyone see it in full screen? Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. So um, let me first uh, give a quick background of IPI. It is a subsidiary of Enterprise uh, Singapore, uh, which my colleague Terence uh, will share more about the organization. So we are set up under Singapore's Ministry of uh, Trade and Industry. And IPI plays the role of an innovation catalyst to accelerate the innovation efforts of our enterprises through connecting them with our technology partners. So in short, uh, you can see us as a technology matchmaker. All right, so see, uh, these are some of the industries that we cover in engaging and, uh, and, uh, partners to introduce uh, innovative technologies to Singapore enterprises. So today's theme of uh, water, waste and food um, is very much uh, in line with uh, these uh, focus areas of ours. All right, so this is a snapshot of um, the platforms and services offered by IPI to support the promotion of um, tech partnerships, which I'll elaborate more in my subsequent slides. And I'd like to introduce um, first the IPI Innovation Marketplace. So this is a free and self-service online platform that connects the tech seekers and providers to find innovation partnerships through our network. So you can search for opportunities in this marketplace in the form of uh, tech needs, all right, um, or tech offers, right, depending on whether or not um, you're seeking technologies or um, uh, offering technologies. All right, so you may like to note that all the postings um, in this platform are anonymized to maintain the confidentiality of the profile owners. So if there's a potential of the profiles featured to what you're looking for, let us know and we can follow up to connect you um, with the profile owner if the opportunity and your interests are aligned. And we also welcome um, you to publish your profiles to generate interest from potential partners in working with you. So um, this could um, generate new opportunities in creating new products or services that can be offered to new markets and geographies to support the business growth of both you and your partner. So feel free to contact us to share about your technology need or offer. And um, we can also help to make introductions to any potential matches that we know of in our network, if there are any. And you may like to subscribe um, to our network through this um, subscribe button. It's a bit small from here, 
yeah, on our website to be updated on the latest opportunities on a weekly basis. Right. And IPI also provides an open innovation challenge platform to support the corporates and Singapore government organizations in seeking innovative technologies from the problem solvers. So we have an app, upcoming innovation challenge to be launched on the 3rd of May in partnership with three corporates from Abu Dhabi that are seeking smart cities technologies. So even though this call is open to Singapore registered companies, we also welcome non-Singapore technology providers to offer their solutions through partnering Singapore companies to jointly participate in this call. So get in touch with us to find out more. All right, and uh, we also have a wider network that we've established with partners from different parts of the world. So from the uh, Nordics, other than uh, the uh, Nordic Innovation House, we have also close collaboration part, uh, partners such as um, the um, Innovation Norway, as well as uh, the uh, partners from the Enterprise Europe Network, where Singapore is also one of the partners within this network. And next I'd like to share about tech innovation IPI's technology matching flagship event and platform that connects global technology providers to tech seekers from different industries for commercialization opportunities. So this can be done through one-to-one -one meetings that can be initiated through the platform. And this event will be held on the 28th to the 30th of September this year as a virtual event. So that makes it easy for anyone outside Singapore to sign up for this event to participate in it. And for the technology providers, we welcome your participation in this year's event to showcase your innovations and discover new opportunities to help accelerate your growth in this region. And for the tech seekers, it's free for you to register to check out the technologies being featured, as well as connect with the tech owners through um, these one-on-one -on -one meetings. All right, so uh, please visit techinnovation.com.sg to find out more. And since a couple of years back, Singapore has been active to support the um, uh, to support Enterprise Singapore's efforts in promoting, promoting cross-border joint R&D projects through initiatives like the Eureka and bilateral funding calls. So for projects awarded under these calls, both the Singapore company and the project partner will receive funding support for the project qualifying cost from each of their funding organizations. And um, there's one up, uh, ongoing right now, all uh, until the 28th of June, there's um, Eureka Clusters AI call. So it's open to projects that applies to a large number of focus areas, including that for the circular economy. All right, and participating countries from the Nordics include Denmark, Finland, and Sweden. So that will mean that there will be opportunities for companies from these countries and Singapore companies to work on co-innovation projects and receive bilateral funding support at the same time when the projects are being awarded. All right, so please uh, visit this web tech, uh, website for details or contact IPI. And these are some success stories um, that IPI has facilitated um, through the past years um, from our platforms and matching service, services. And I've extracted a few that are in line with today's theme for your information. So for details, uh, you may visit um, this uh, website uh, on success stories that uh, we have, All right? And Last but not least, stay updated um, with the latest in the innovation landscape by subscribing to our network. And uh, with this, um, I'd like to wrap up my presentation and thank you everyone for your attention. Okay. Sammy? All right. Yes, excellent. Thank you so much, Luna. And for our Nordic participants today, uh, definitely the tech innovation is something what you, that you should uh, Consider we've been participating with multiple Nordic companies there before, and it's been really, really good platform to connect with the local, uh, local stakeholders. Great. Thanks again, Lunne. Always a yeah, pleasure. Thanks, Amy. And uh, next, we're going to give the stage then to Terence uh, from Enterprise Singapore. Hello. Terence. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me well? Yep. Okay, great. Let me share my screen. Okay, are you seeing my slides? Yes, yeah. Okay, great. 
Okay, so hi, uh, everyone. Uh, good afternoon to all that is attending from Singapore and uh, good morning to those that are attending from uh, Europe. Uh, my name is Terence. I'm from the Western Europe team of Enterprise Singapore. Um, so I think I'll just like to provide a top-down um, introduction of what uh, we do in Enterprise Singapore. All right, so Enterprise Singapore is actually um, together with a few other agencies within the Ministry of Trade and Industry family, uh, we are tasked to grow Singapore's economy. Right, so specifically Enterprise Singapore, we are an agency that is championing um, enterprise development. And we do have a number of uh, mandates as Enterprise Singapore, but for the purpose of today's introduction, I will just talk about uh, the relevant ones. Right. So, uh, number one, Enterprise Singapore oversees uh, capabilities building, uh, capabilities development uh, for our local enterprises. That means to say that we ensure the local companies' uh, skills and technologies uh, are competitive and relevant in today's uh, context. Uh, number two, uh, Enterprise Singapore also oversees internationalization, uh, which means to say that we help local companies set up uh, the overseas presence uh, and also to foster international collaborations uh, to look for uh, collaboration opportunities uh, for our Singapore enterprises. Right. And number three that is relevant to today's discussion is that we are tasked to uh, develop Singapore's startup and innovation ecosystem uh, such, such that we position Singapore as a, a, an innovation and startup hub in Asia. And that is also a big reason why we have been working with uh, a lot with the Nordic Innovation House. Next slide. Right, so with um, Singapore's strategic location in the heart of Asia, actually uh, also coupled, coupled with um, several attributes such as uh, the ease of doing business, uh, the stable and uh, political environment, uh, highly educated and skilled workforce, and more that you can actually see on the slides. Singapore is uh, a natural gateway to Asia, and we are home to uh, the regional headquarters of many international companies and have local companies that are well connected and very familiar with the uh, Asian region. So this is a shout out to Nordic companies, Nordic startups uh, that are among uh, the, the uh, group within this uh, webinar. You know, some of you may wish to venture into this region and we strongly encourage you to tap on our institutional knowledge and network to do so. Right, so today's program is actually centered around uh, WWF, right? Race, water and food. But more broadly speaking, uh, these are areas covered within uh, the overarching theme of uh, circular economy and sustainability which has been um, gaining immense uh, attention, right? So um, specific to this team, Singapore's um, um, relevant solution providers mainly span across these five uh, domains, some of whom are amongst the, the audience today. And uh, there are indeed companies that have developed capabilities and track record in sustainable solutions and some of those that have indeed benefited from pursuing sustainable practices. But that said, we recognize that there needs to be, uh, much needs to be done to really keep up with the developments uh, in this domain. And just last month, uh, Singapore announced the Singapore Green Plan 2030. And this goes to show the Singapore government's commitments towards uh, this topic. While this is a multi-ministerial uh, plan, the economic agency's efforts are mainly captured under the green economy pillar, which you see in red, emphasizing on jobs creation, transforming our industries, and harnessing sustainability as a competitive advantage. Okay, so that, what you see here is an overview of our sustainability strategy and priorities uh, in Enterprise Singapore. So as a first step, we think that it is important to spread the awareness about uh, sustainability among local enterprises and develop an understanding of where uh, they stand. So awareness could come in the form of you know, uh, things like best practices, business models, success stories, uh, standards and regulations, etc. Right. So depending on how progressive already companies are, 
we will then uh, support them with um, uh, things like capabilities building or bring them opportunities to validate, deploy uh, the solutions both locally and as well as internationally. So relating back to um, relating back to the point about uh, Enterprise Singapore's mandate in innovation, we've also been doing more to facilitate innovation exchanges between local and uh, international players, I think some of which were elaborated already by Lin earlier. Uh, something that is uh, complementary to what uh, Lin mentioned earlier would be what the government has set up, uh, this, this uh, platform that is called uh, an innovation, uh, uh, what the, the platform that's called uh, Open Innovation Network. So essentially, you can see this platform as a depository of open innovation activities uh, that are centralized onto a, a single website. Um, this platform actually provides uh, a one-stop view of various in, uh, innovation challenges, success stories, and other relevant information that both challenge owners and solution providers may find interesting. Right. So in order to access this website, you can actually visit uh, openinnovationnetwork.gov.sg. Uh, one of these um, open innovation challenges that uh, one was the Sustainability Open Innovation Challenge, which was uh, run both in 2019 and 2020. So across both years, actually, the, the challenge saw a total of 29 challenge statements from 25 uh, public and private uh, demand drivers. And at this point, I think I'd like to also give a heads up that there will be similarly a third run of the Sustainability Open Innovation Challenge held this year uh, that is open to global submissions. So more details will be released uh, at the later stage. Uh, we will definitely be reaching out to the Nordic Innovation House to uh, share more information. Right. So that's all from me. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Terence. And looking forward to all those all those details. And, and, and as always, we're very happy to share this, this with our uh, Nordic audience. For sure. Um, excellent. Let's move then forward and, and give the stage then to the Nordic companies. And uh, we have categorized the companies in three different groups. Our group number one, where we have four companies today, is all about different uh, industrial wastewater solutions. Uh, group number two is more about uh, organic waste. And then group three, where we have one company is about river cleaning and how that can be as a free service. So that's quite interesting. So stay tuned all the way to the end. But uh, now without any further ado, I'm gonna uh, hand over the stage to a company called Devaco. And we have a Tony Franti presenting their solution. Tony, over to you. Thank you, Sonny. My name is Tony Franti from Debacle Limited. Thank you for this opportunity to present our company and offering. I'll begin with a short introduction. Clean water is the base for life, but still 80% of all wastewater is completely untreated. A great number of wastewater treatment facilities need to be built, maintained, and updated as a partial solution for this challenge. Good and reliable equipment have a very important role in this, and this is where we can help. Under our DEVA brand, we design, manufacture, and sell equipment for sludge thickening, dewatering, and sludge removal. Effective sludge collection and dewatering is important in a fight to stop climate change and destruction of nature. It enables methods to reach sustainability goals and leads to circular economy by offering alternative source for energy and other uses for the dewatered sludge cake. At least the collected matter is not directly released to the nature. We have 35 years of experience in sludge treatment. We specialize in manufacturing high quality equipment that work as, work as designed and promised. And we also offer supervisioning, installation and after sales services. Our equipment are made in Finland and we operate under ISO 9001 standards. Our operations are based in Finland, but in many locations we are able to support our customers through our partner and reseller network. For sludge and scum collection and removal, we offer chain and flight type chain scraper systems. These are the most sophisticated systems for sludge and scum removal. Our scrapers offer great benefits, optimal and minimum land and space use, 
high removal efficiency, low capital and maintenance cost and easy installation. Our superior design and non-metallic DEVA components offer top class features, performance and durability. These systems can be used in multiple applications such as water and wastewater treatment, oily water, desalination, duff tanks, sand traps and grease removal. We offer all possible configurations for rectangular basins from top and bottom scraping to multi-layer systems and supply all the needed accessories for the systems including scum pipes, beach plates and system controls. In sludge thickening and dewatering, our solutions are based around belt filter presses and gravity belt thickness. Belt filter presses offer great advantages such as low energy consumption, suitability for various applications, and relatively high sludge dryness. Total lifetime costs are extremely competitive. Investment, running, and maintenance costs are low, and the presses have a very long lifespan. Reparations are rather easy, cheap, and do not require long standing times. Our portfolio covers solutions for, from small scale to high capacity municipal and industrial projects, or alternatively from cost effective solutions to industry leading features. We supply all the needed accessories for full dewatering cell, including flocculators, polymer units, control systems and conveyors. We are continuously developing our products. One of our ongoing development projects is to bring cloud-based and AI-assisted monitoring to our systems. This offers various benefits, such as decreased power consumption, extended system lifetime, and overall process optimization. Our equipment are trusted and used by municipal and industrial customers worldwide, from small private companies to leading international contractors. Here you can see a few of our partners and customers. Our track record includes over 3,500 chain scraper systems and over 1,000 belt filter presses and gravity belt thickener deliveries to over 80 countries. Next, I'll show a few example cases. Langat Centralized Sewage Treatment Plant in Malaysia is a mega project treating wastewaters coming from nearly a million people. For this project, we deliver delivered 96 chain scraper systems and 48 scum pipes. Kamana sewage treatment plant is mainly large mega project in Philippines that will treat wastewaters from about 1.2 million households. Our full product portfolio will be used in this project for sludge and scum removal and dewatering. I have our biggest and fastest growing market, China, as an example of a specific market area. I've selected Wengzhou Wastewater Treatment Plant as an example case. For this challenging project, we delivered 24 two-layer chain scraper systems that help to solve the challenges with space limitations in a partly underground plant construction. In order to showcase the business opportunities that our equipment offer, I want to mention Atal Engineering. Adal is one of our, our six resellers in China. This huge company is one of the leading Chinese electrical and mechanical engineering groups. They began as our customer in a contractor role as they needed equipment for their own projects. Based on the successful and profitable projects, they have developed DEVA chain scraper systems and related services to be one of their actual business lines, stretching outside the typical contractor role. We know that it takes much more than just good equipment to make the customer happy and reach a successful delivery project. Good products, overall quality, know-how, flexibility, accuracy, honesty, and right attitude are all needed to establish trustworthy partnership. Choose DEVA for smoother projects, better processes, overall cost savings, and cleaner future. We want to find new business opportunities and we'll believe that many companies operating in this field can benefit from our offering. We can operate directly with end customers, but typically cooperation is done with the contractor. Most importantly, we are looking for resellers to be our local partners. For this, we have great needs in Southeast Asia and in Singapore. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for your time, and please contact us if you find any of this interesting or want to know more. Excellent. Thank you so much, Tony. And uh, let's then take the next company, uh, which is Scanwater, and we have a Tao Huang uh, presenting their solution. Tao, over to you. Thank you, Sami. <laughs> 
So good morning and good afternoon to my Singapore friend. My name is Tao. I'm the sales and the marketing director at Scandinavia Water Technology. So who we are? We are a Norwegian company called the Scandinavia Water Technology and in short, the Scan Water. We are an engineering company dealing with the water and wastewater. We are private owned company and based in Norway since uh, 1985. We are part of a Massimania group. Massimania is owned 100% by the management, established in 1922. We have around 170 employees in Norway and 100 of them are engineers. Massimania owns company in different locations. Uh, for example, in Norway, Sweden, Finland, Estonia, Natovia, France, Kenya, as well as China, totally in different 15 different locations. What ScanWater specializes in providing? We provide solutions in water, water solution as a turnkey solution project, humanitarian and I, and the municipal preference. Today's problem of increasing urban population imposes higher environmental challenges to the modern city. At the same time, city must optimize the well-being and op minimize the, its environmental impact. In many of the urban areas, the sewer systems are overloaded and do not allow for more development. Additional, through the current handling of the organic household, household and toilet waste, on the one hand, valuable resources are lost. And on the other hand, stress the existing treatment infrastructure, but also if not treated properly, contribute to the environmental pollution. So what we do, scan water, conduct experiments on the development of the innovative water management solution, green energy. The solution is under the CU Green project and it's one of the EU Horizon 2020 project which co-funded from EU and China with totally funding of 9 million euro. A smart green solution for integrated water and sanitation, stormwater management, energy supply, and nutrient management in the city based on the principle of resource recovery. And the safe reuse aim to increase the resilience of the city make urban development more climate, environmental, and human friendly with nearly zero emission, circular economic, low climate, and water footprint. So elaborate a little bit in the building infrastructure, infrastructures. Green energy will reduce the water consumption by using water saving fixtures as vacuum toilets and reuse gray water so source facilitate the recycling of the nutrients to the urban or peri-urban agriculture. And source all most eliminate pollutions of the surface water. Integrated with the biogas reactor, will allow biogas production from the toilet waste and the organic household waste, delivering heat and power, but also nutrients retained to support greenhouse food production. The innovative element of green energy is a well-balanced combina combination of a technique and a social innovation that facilitates reducing water consumption, the minimization of a greenhouse gas emission, the promotion of reusing CO2, and the waste-based nutrient in local greenhouse, the production of a biogas from the domestic organic waste, the production of a fertilizer from domestic organic waste and the promotion of ecological sanitation. This is some achievement, but not at least from the project as example product of the resource recovery from the black water. Another benefit example by using the vacuum based technology, the vacuum sewer will much more energy efficiency as well as safety. Since the vacuum system is closed loop system and it will not have any of the leakage. So far, we have uh, 
three pilot projects in different locations. In China, two projects in Beijing and one in Changsha. As well as we have one in Norway, the, as shown in the picture, we will convert the old hospital and facilities to about 1,000 apartments. We are looking for the local partners who can develop the local market together. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Tao. Thank you. And uh, then our next company is coming from Finland. It's called Sophie Filtration, and we have a Sandra uh, Pandi presenting their solution. Sandra, over to you. Yes, Sami, thank you so much, and uh, good afternoon, Nordics, and uh, good evening to Singapore. So my name is Chandra, and uh, I'm a technical marketing specialist at Sophie Filtration. Sophie Filtration was founded in 2011. We are a growth company, and we provide innovative industrial water treatment solutions. So as we know, water scarcity is a global challenge and with increasing demand and water supply gap, it is critical to treat the wastewater for reuse purposes, not just efficiently, but also in a sustainable and in an economical manner. Um, treating industrial wastewater could be challenging, particularly filtering the small particulates from the water. Uh, conventional technologies has their own limitations and besides current options that are available in the market are based on mechanical self-cleaning filters, which uh, do not go low enough micron ranges. And this is where our expertise in. So basically we reclaim industrial wastewater for reuse purposes and with, in a very economical and sustainable way. Um, so this is a picture from the zinc refinery, as you can see from the, and uh, using sofa filter, you're able to purify the water um, and then convert the, use this for your further industrial applications. Um, so now I would like to highlight why we stand, uh, you know, outside the existing market, why our technology is different from the existing uh, technologies in the market. So we have three unique key features in our, uh, filter system. So we use a novel cross flow design, which uh, allows us to use the high velocity cross flow with which we can get a high capacity of water in, running inside the filter element. Uh, secondly, we use the sustainable filter element, meaning we do not use cartridge filter element. We use the wire mesh element and which is sustainable and the lifetime of this filter element is up to 10 years. Uh, thirdly, we use the high power ultrasonic features, which supports the back flush to keep the filter element clean. Um, it's a self-cleaning uh, system. So basically it automates the system by itself for the cleaning, which uh, eliminates the need of manual intervention. Um, and uh, yeah, and furthermore, we also have the IoT capabilities for remote monitoring and control. So overall, our system is uh, designed for on a circular economy principle. Let's just put it this way. So here are our product and service capability beside how we function or how our process goes basically. So here is the lab testing. First, we get the lab samples uh, to uh, do the lab testing. And uh, then after that, either in the liquid form or in the powder form, and then we move on to the field pilot, meaning that our system is compact and mobile, so we can actually, it's movable. So uh, to perform the field test and in the field test, we get the performance data. Uh, and then based on that, we customize the product. And uh, then we also provide the after sales services. Um, and using our IoT capabilities, we can also have the remote monitoring and control features enabled. So this is a basic uh, setup for the uh, for the mining industry, for example, if you're if you're in the mining industry and you would like to have this remote monitoring and control feature, so using that you are actually able to have the performance data, uh, and based on that you can automate your features accordingly. So here, uh, our system is not just sustainable, but it's also very cost efficient, meaning that uh, here are the Nordic tariffs that uh, presented on the left and which means the freshwater cost is one 
euro per cubic meter and the wastewater cost is two euro per cubic meter, which is three euros overall the cost and using our filter you are able to reduce 90% of the life cycle cost. Here is the case study that uh, I would like to present. Uh, this is the waste to energy plant in Tampere uh, in Finland, southern Finland. And uh, here the prior practice was that they were discarding the wastewater in back to the environment. And uh, using our system, they were actually able to purify and reuse the water in their further processes, and uh, which not only increased the efficiency of the plant, but also they were able to um, minimize the cost uh, according to the customer feedback. The pay payback time was less than one year in this particular case. Um, so here's the prime industrial applications that um, we work with. Power, uh, the example that I have just shown you, and the mining. Uh, chemicals, marine, oil and gas, and steel. We are very active with the steel nowadays. Um, we have a currently pilot running in a uh, steel plant in Italy. So we are collaborating with the European Union in that project. So yeah, we are very active with the steel industry at the moment. Um, and then this is our team. Here's our CEO, Ville Hakala. He has uh, experience of 10 plus years in water filtration technologies and in mining. Uh, and then we have Steve Clark. He's a renowned name in water treatment industry. He's based in US and um, he had previously worked in Dow Chemicals and uh, he are, we are a growth company and here's our small team. So our clients are mainly based in uh, Nordic, uh, but we also have international clients such as Anglo-American. Um, so, and uh, we would love to explore the opportunities in Singapore. Um, uh, so our, we are backed by the venture capitalists, which is MRR, Loudspring and Voima Ventures. Uh, we actually got the funding uh, last autumn of 3 million euros. Uh, so our upcoming target for Singapore, um, we would love to explore the market opportunities in uh, Singapore. Um, as we are mainly operating now in US and in Nordic. So we would love to explore the opportunities in Singapore and really would like to go to the niche, like where we can bring more value to the, to the market or the clients. And we would also look for the project collaboration, well, like in consortium or, uh, and then we also would like to be the partnership with the system integrators who can be our market to channel partners. So here is a Sophie's office location. We are based in Espo, Finland, Southern Finland, and our subsidiaries in Houston, Texas. And we have partners in Canada and also in different parts of Europe. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for your attention and looking forward for one-on-one -on -one meeting or any questions that you have. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sandra, for your presentation. Okay, uh, then the last company from our first uh, way, wastewater group uh, is also coming from Finland. Uh, it's called Valmet, and we have a Heli uh, Kairala presenting their solution. Heli? Yes, thank you, Sami. I will put this still in the presentation mode. Thank you. So my name is uh, Heli Karaila and I'm working as a business manager in Valmet. And together with my uh, Valmet Indonesia colleagues, we are participating in this event. So thank you for this opportunity. Valmet is a global technology company. Uh, last year, our net sales was uh, 3.7 billion euros. And there are over 14,000 professionals working globally. Wastewater is one of the growth areas for Valmet automation business line. There is lack of accurate and reliable real-time measurement and optimizer applications, especially for the wastewater sludge process area. Sludge process area is very challenging for the real-time measurement because there is typically that much air and debris and grease in the process. Based uh, on the end customer feedback, about 30% of the wastewater plant operational costs are coming from the sludge processing and sludge further treatment costs. And because of lack of reliable measurement and control solution, the process is mainly uh, controlled manually 
based on the laboratory analysis and visual look. So there is really a place for reliable measurement and control application. And Valmet has solution for, for that need. And, and this is based on the 50 years uh, measurement technology development and control application development, what we have done, especially in the pulp and paper business area. And, um, and based on this, we, have, we can now offer advanced industrial quality measurement technology to the wastewater sector. And it is important that we have not only moved or copied those technology from other uh, from the pulp and paper sector, but we have further developed those uh, together with the end customer so that they really fit to the wastewater area. We have over 2000 real time measurement references available globally with excellent customer benefits. In order to get the full benefits of the advanced real time measurement, Valmet has developed sludge dewatering optimizer called Valmet SDO. This is specially developed to the centrifuge uh, dewatering area in order to optimize the solid content in the centrate dry cake, as well as minimize the polymer usage. With Valmet DNA automation system, it is possible to automate the whole wastewater process. Valmet DNA includes process optimization, information management, environmental reporting, as well as condition monitoring. For Valmet, it is important to support end customers via services during the whole life cycle in order the end customers get the best pe performance from the applications. Valmet industrial internet solutions are an important part of the offering as well. Valmet solid measurements are specially used at the wastewater plant sludge process area, and those uh, measurements uh, are visualized in this picture with the, with the symbols. So we can cover all sludge process solid measurements need. The Valmet Industrial Internet Solution combine advanced monitoring of the wastewater plant, data-driven optimization, and remote services from Valmet Performance Center in, into a comprehensive solutions. The purpose is to efficiently utilize data and Valmet expertise to provide tangible benefits for our customers. So we have uh, good reference cases available and here are example of those. The first one is coming from Finland, uh, Tampere Vinikanlahti wastewater plant, municipal wastewater plant. And in that uh, case, uh, we were able to uh, um, decrease uh, the centroid solid amount at the sludge dewatering area with 50 procents, increase the solid uh, in the dewatering sludge with 2 percent and in the same time the polymer usage was decreased with 50 percent. The other case is coming from China and in China we have nowadays about 200 measurement references available and one of those is this uh, Shanghai Taihe. Uh, wastewater plant and last year they decided to invest uh, to the primary sludge as well as to the sludge dewatering area with Valmet solutions in order to increase the performance of the plant. The next case is also coming from China, Hong Kong, and uh, this is the world's largest uh, sludge incineration plant in Hong Kong and there is also Valmet solid measurement available. In Singapore, we have also um, measurement and control application ongoing, but they are still in the early phase. Here are uh, some other statements. And uh, what is very important is that uh, the payback time can be as short as only a couple of months with our solutions. Singapore is, is the water hub to the Asia market. And via this event, we really li like to promote our solutions and the benefits of using, using the solutions in Singapore, as well as in the whole Southeast Asia area. And our target is to have new customers, operators, new business partners, uh, EPC distributors, engineering offices, as well as service providers contacts. 
So thank you on behalf of me and here are still our contact information. Looking forward to the uh, next level discuss, more detailed discussion. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Heli. And um, now it's time to shift gears and move forward in the, to the second group, which is all about organic waste. And the first company is in this group is also coming from Finland. It's called Partas Fin, and we have Ella Gursel uh, presenting their solutions. Ella, over to you. Thank you, Sami. Can you see? You can see the presentation, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Hi, I'm Ena Yursa, Head of Commercial at Energy Market Transition Asia. We're based in Singapore and represent Artashfin in Southeast Asia. Artashfin R&D expertise is capitalized on 40 years of engineering and manufacturing legacy of <coughs> Artash sister companies in Finland, Germany, and Turkey. Artash designs, produces, and implements water, waste, air, and bioenergy solutions. The company covers all four aspects of the environmental technology. In water, Artash delivers pre-treatment, filtration, softening, desalination, demineralization, and ultra-pure water treatment plants. In waste, Artash delivers physical, chemical, biological, anaerobic, aerobic, attached growth systems, or ambia, sludge digestion, and dewatering. Equally, Artashfin has flue gas treatment and bioenergy solutions. So far, the company has designed and supplied over 400 customers globally. This is one of our client testimonials in hotel business. Artashfin delivered a customized and fully integrated set of solutions, which stack up as legal blocks, targeting their specific water and organic waste problems. As one shop, solution provider, Artas managed to meet all the environmental needs of its clients. Artas Fins technologies solve problems dealing with access to clean water for drinking in rural and urban settings, water treatment for specific industrial use, wastewater reuse and recycling, wastewater and sludge disposal, organic waste management, waste gas management, and renewable energy from waste. The company has experience in pro projects catering for 100 to 100,000 people. Artasfin's philosophy is to provide integrated, modular, customized solutions operating with renewable energy. Artas drives change towards circular economy. Artasfin's tested and proven products include Arto, remorse osmosis unit, Arup, ultra filtration system, Armo, mobile ultra pure water treatment plant, RPAC activated sludge based sewage treatment, RMBR membrane bioreactor based biological wastewater treatment integrated with solar panels, Kimpa chemical wastewater treatment, RDES chemical and biological desulfurization and flue gas treatment system, and Armut compact and modular biogas system. To give you and an, an example of Artash Fin's integrated holistic approach, this is a five-star hotel located in the Mediterranean region with limited road access. Artas Fin developed a fully integrated and standalone solution. Artas treated wastewater for recycling, took the sludge, gardening waste, and together with the biodegradable kitchen waste, fed them in Artash's compact biogas plant, where it generated biogas. The generated fertilizer at the outlet was completely safe to be used at recreational areas of the hotel. With its AMBR solutions, Artash provides very high quality treated water that can be reused for many purposes. When integrated with solar panels, the system can work as a standalone solution in remote areas. Artash's compact, compact biogas solution that can be used 
both as a sludge and organic waste digester. It provides the perfect solution for decentralized organic waste management. Our task is currently working on technology development and integration of the armut in vertical farming. This is a water desalination and demineralization plant that was delivered to Siemens with Arto and Arup systems. Arto's mobile water treatment system, Armo, is designed as a plug and play system. It meets either potable or ultra pure water needs and can be easily relocated and deployed one location to another. It is a practical system to meet urgent, unexpected and instant water demand. These are the photos from the containerized water treatment plants Artas built for the International Committee of the Red Cross in Juba, South Sudan. With this potable water project, Artas system produced a potable water production of 12,000 cubic meter per day capacity and met the demand of 80,000 people living in the region. This shows the great potential of a fully containerized solution. This is the POSCO project, an example of an integrated stationary project. Artas delivered raw water and demineralized water treatment with industrial sewage wastewater treatment, which was designed with Artas Spin's own MBR technology. Besides working with MNCs and NGOs, Artas Spin works with municipalities. This plant was designed with fixed film attached growth activated sludge technology. The bacteria grows on the submerged plastic media. With this particular design, Artas Fin treated the same amount of wastewater in one third of the space needed for a normal activated sludge plant. As a one-shop solution provider, Artas designs, manufactures, implements, and operates fully integrated solutions without any third-party intervention. This is what sets Artas Fin apart from other solutions in the market. Artas caters to a diverse portfolio of global, regional, and local customers. Artas Fin chose Singapore as a hub to scale up its technologies and operations in Asia and engage us energy market transition in Asia as their local representative. Together, we're looking for opportunities to deploy our proven containerized and integrated solutions and partner with leading players for stationary solutions in Southeast Asia region. We look forward to working with you. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Elam. Thanks, Sami. And next we have two companies, two gentlemen from Norway. Uh, Eric and Ivar are presenting uh, N2 Applied and Reclima Joint Solution. Eric, over to you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon to Singapore and Southeast Asia. My name is uh, Eirik Dahlberg and I'm the head of uh, global sales at N2 Applied. And with me in this program, uh, I have Ivar Hagebom, uh, the CEO of company Reklima. We hope that we shall uh, be able to attract attention uh, from the audience, from Lynn, from Terence, towards our unique product offerings uh, that really represents a paradigm shift in global food production. 30 years from now, we will have a global population of 10 billion people, which means we will need to increase food production by a massive 50% compared to the current situation. And that we need to do in a sustainable way where we lower the greenhouse gas emissions and where we also remove pollution. And at the same time, trying to step away from or at least not increasing the use of polluting mineral fertilizer. In Singapore, you have a waste problem and food waste alone represents uh, 750,000 tons per year, which potentially could generate 1.25 terawatt delivered to the grid if handled through a biogas plant. Now, 
we are not offering the biogas plant itself, but we are offering infrastructure around it. And from the N2 side, we have a plasma unit where we are taking in the air surrounding us. We are splitting this up in nitrogen and oxygen, making nitrogen oxides that we are deploying and mixing into manure or digestate and thereby creating a highly potent fertilizer to use in rooftop gardening and so on. So we are using parts of the electricity then generated through uh, the biogas plant. We have conducted the field trials. Uh, we have uh, several pilots and also clients where we have installed our plant. This photo is showing from a field trial that we did at Bingham Farm in Northern Ireland, where they have 750 dairy cows and they do have an on-site biogas plant where we are treating the digestates coming out from that very much then in a sustainable way, lowering the emissions, greenhouse gas, and also on the polluting ammonia getting that out. So our main drivers um, on a global scale, that is uh, definitely to provide food production for uh, the population in a sustainable way, adhering to the uh, Paris Climate Agreement. And then in Singapore, uh, we are aiming at helping out uh, the waste problem that you have uh, locally. Then over to you, Ivar, at the Klima. Thank you, Eirik. My name is Ivar Hagman. I work in an R&D company called Reclima, which is owned by, among others, two uh, major waste companies in Norway. Food waste is a challenge, and uh, to have a substantial circular economy solution for food waste is one of the targets we have. These tomatoes are made only on resources made out of um, waste uh, treatment, uh, organic waste treatment and, and livestock manure. They have no uh, pesticides use or we have no uh, fertilizer, uh, artificial fertilizer used here. This is only on, on the, the biogas resources from the production. Thank you. Our business idea is, uh, uh, we call it from food to waste to food, is a make a circular sustainable solution for handling the organic waste and, and so far on one plant we have made to treat 20 percent of the population's Norway uh, food waste and we are picking out um, solutions from that experience to find economically good platforms to work on for the, the, the next level. The solution is not high tech it, it's a more or less the, the, the knowledge of, of how we use the microbes how we we use the energy and how we use the co2 together with uh, with uh, the production of gas so in our solution our trucks uh, collecting the garbage are using the biogas and we give back food to the consumers through, the, through uh, co2 uh, use of uh, from the plant and we also have uh, all the fertilizer and all, all, all the the production area is, is uh, done from, from the organic material. To be able to produce from the material, next please, coming out of the, of the biogas on the digestive, we have developed a new um, technique and solution for how we, we, we uh, can use this uh, digestive as a, as a total uh, complex and, and, and uh, the whole process of growing. This is called digestive uh, digaponics, and we, we use worms to, to uh, keep the, 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 the solid uh, way, uh, solid uh, soil uh, good. And I, we see that after one year of growing, actually the quality of the soil is better than when we started. So this is a, it's a developing project which is going well. Next. We are an R&D project, which is more technique. This is a unique technique. We try to make a climate inside the greenhouse so we don't have to open it. 
it gives us the possibility to, to collect more CO2 from the biogas production and use that as a stimulation for the growing. That, that's um, a challenge, of course, uh, in climate-wise. Uh, in in your, your climate, uh, the heat will, will give us some challenges. But at the moment, we are producing these tomatoes and selling them for, for the commercial market in Norway and looking at upscaling this for collecting more CO2. What are we looking for in this process? Oh, we're going for upscaling, sorry. We're going for upscaling now, but we're also looking at downscaling. Thank you. We are looking for investors, distribution, access to influencers, and we would love to be a partner in collaboration with your development projects. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, gentlemen, Ivar and Eric. Uh, we will stay now in Norway. We can hand over the stage to Norsk Biogas, and we have Ule presenting their solution. Ule, over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I start my presentation to you today uh, asking the question, why pretreatment? Food handling is complicated. It's complicated because it involves several disciplines, technologies and attitudes. There are four main sources where food waste occurs, all with their distinct differences, both in terms of composition of the waste itself but also in terms of internal handling, collection, and the logistics in use. This complexity paired with partly opposite interests create an environment where impurities and contamination of the resource always will occur. The end product from pretreatment of food waste is an energy-rich slurry we normally, normally refer to as substrate. Through the biological process in the digester, biogas and digest is produced. Beside that impurities in the substrate may cause processual problems, it's degeneration of the digestate that worries the most. Digestate is first class natural fertilizer where all nutritions are kept intact. It is obvious that a contaminated digestate neither will nor should be accepted in agriculture. Stricter standards are under elaboration, especially focus the problem that arise with micro and nano plastics. I have been within the recycling industry for more than two decades, most of them in the waste to energy sector. During that period, we have seen many different technologies and designs of pretreatment systems in use. As far as I understand, are the two observations and concerns that needs to be addressed in this context. First, most, if not all, systems designs are different. And second, the content of degradable matter that follows the reject due to insufficient separation, in most cases is significant with a huge impact on one's profit making. It is reasonable to think that over the years there has been a lack of focus of pretreatment in general, leading to insufficient solutions. However, we observe that industry now has come to terms with that pretreatment is a bottleneck that must be focused more seriously. In my mind, there is no doubt that it is possible to purify food waste many different ways, the problem is that many processing steps is investment intensive and dry OPEX high. Simplicity, solidity, and standardization is our way of thinking, and we believe that our system has proven its justification. It's uh, efficiency and sturdiness over more than 10 years in operation. The machine works in a batch driven process based on a patent centrifuge principle. As you can see from the prestanda, it's a multi-source machine with the capacity to process liquid and solid waste. The machine performs in three steps, separation or segregation as you call it, reject cleaning, collect more digestible, and reject drying or remove liquids and moisture. Since the separation step do not involve any form of cutting or size reduction, the amount of microplastics are to a minimum. We strongly believe in standardization. The fact that a fixed process design enables more scientific approach in regard to development and trim of the system. It enables exchange of data and data mining from all plants in operation in addition to cooperation and training among operators of the system. The BPP system is fully automated and may be controlled remotely. 
Until now, we have installed seven pretreatment systems in Scandinavia, basically two municipal owned based facilities. All in all, around 250,000 tons is processed yearly. Three of our installations are planning for extensions this year and duplications of biceps. All plants are used as showcases and to a certain extent, training grounds. I presume you already know the basics about our company. Let me just add a few things. Norsk Biogas was funded solely on the invention of the Biosep technology and the bio preplant processes design as a specialized company within pretreatment of food waste. Last year, we decided to involve ourselves in developing pretreatment solutions for other complex waste streams as well to exploit our competence through access to new technology. Through the cooperation with Polar Metallurgica, we get access to the dry part of the recycling industry. Altogether, this will enable us to develop further and give us direction in the years to come. Except for our home market, Scandinavia, Norsk Bargas aim to play a role in the coming food waste shift within the EU, where more than 47 million tons need to find its way to the digesters. We believe our technology and way of thinking fits the task in hand perfect. As for the Southeast Asia region, it's a matter of cooperation and long-term thinking. The region are in various stages of development in terms of economy, legislations, environment and awareness, etc., etc. In addition, we know from assignments in Bangladesh and Korea that the waste itself is very different from what comes out of the European meal. This calls for our local based partnerships. We strongly believe that the right partner also can play a role in European and Scandinavian markets, whether we talk about product services or companies. To be able to operate in any market, in addition to the technical products itself, one need marketing capacity and a sales force that can find and contract business opportunities. A strong engineering partner is needed, basically within the discipline of process engineering. And finally, with a financial capacity to meet tendering requirements. Thank you very much for your attention. Very good. Thank you so much, Ola. And um, next we have Terra Marine and Tour Live presenting their solution. Yes, uh, good afternoon in Singapore. My name is uh, Tour Live Uglan and uh, I represent Terra Marine, as it said, and uh, we are working with uh, organic waste and uh, find good solutions for recycling. There are a lot of technologies for processing organic waste and um, the main goal for those are to stabilize and minimize the volume. Um, when we look at the waste, we look for opportunities with it and look upon it as a resource that should be brought back into new production of food. Organic waste is normally rich in nutrients and have a high concentration of organic material that is preferred among farmers in Southeast Asia. Organic material is crucial for actually the, 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 to have a, a, a soil that actually has a life. And uh, that is a problem in uh, the market in uh, Southeast Asia, that it is an overuse of chemical fertilizers and the soil is getting more and more damaged. So um, that's why we are focusing on this in that part of the globe. And in, in the rating of organic waste, from my understanding, it should not be a part of our green future. Uh, if we think about, about uh, wastewater treatment plant, uh, a lot of places in, in Asia, the waste, the cake from that one is actually going just for incineration or landfilling or kind of industrial use. While our goal is actually to lead it into agriculture, where it can be used for landscaping sector, soil conditioners, and fertilizer that is the highest hanging way of, of using it that we are specialists in. What we do is actually we are evaluating the waste according to quality to see if it can be used actually as a fertilizer high quality fertilizer. And then we need to look at the heavy metals, bacteria, organic pollutants, and things like that. 
And then we want to discuss with the waste owner actually potential further treatment of it to make it a, as a product. And then we take the full responsibility of bringing that organic waste back to farmland as a fertilizer and then closing the cycle. We are cooperating with a lot of uh, companies in uh, Europe that has good technologies for using it for drying and uh, pelletizing and make it over to a product that is saleable. A cake, a wet dewatered sludge cannot be used in this market. That is the most common way to use it in Europe and in the US because we have an industrial agriculture. But the poor farmer in Vietnam or other places, he is buying 25 kilo bags of pelletized fertilizer to use in his fields. So we need to cope with that and bring the products over in that format. So that's why we, uh, now it's around 10 years ago, started the first factory in, uh, in Europe actually processing um, biosolids into fertilizer. And uh, we have a wide range of different products that we are producing with different recipes suitable for different uh, uh, crops in the tropic market. We also are working with liquid fertilizer, mainly that is potential if we have food waste, it might be possible. possible. And also if uh, you have some kind of waste from food processing industry. To be able to export and to in, enter a market like Vietnam, you also need to show that these products as, actually has an effect. And we started already seven years ago in Vietnam actually to do these testing in the fields just to, to check how it works and also to show it for our customers. And as you see on these two photos here, this is with or without our organic fertilizer. And organic material makes something tremendous with the, with the soil and the growing conditions in the tropic area when we're adding it, as we have seen. So our products has been extremely popular there and we cannot meet the demand in the market for at the moment. We set up two companies in Vietnam and uh, with experts within marketing, logistic, finance, and R&D. And we are importing organic fertilizers from Norway, Japan, Denmark, Qatar, and South Korea to Vietnam. Uh, we saw that it's important to be available in the market and to be there because we need not just to organize a transport and sell it, but we also need to be there for our customers doing sales activity and following up activities. So uh, this photo is from one of these hundreds of farmers shows we are attending since there are around 60 million farmers in Vietnam. And it's a big task actually to follow up that volume. So then we are now in Singapore and the question is why are we there? And that is because when we are importing from Norway, from European countries, farmers in Vietnam look upon that as a, a good standard and a guarantee for good products. And it's also the same with Singapore because Singapore has a good reputation in Southeast Asia and products from Singapore will be welcomed in the farmer's market. We have also been looking into especially the biosolids from, uh, from, uh, from Singapore and see that the heavy metals level is very low and comparable to what we have in Norway due to the lack of industry in the area. So we are ready to go into dialogue with companies that are looking for better solutions for their organic waste. So what we offer is that we are turning the organic waste from problems to valuable resources and we reduce the disposal cost that is quite high if you have incineration as a solution and zero waste and full re recycling into new production of food is absolutely the correct way to do it in our time. And technology solutions in cooperation with leading European companies as I mentioned. So our involvement can be varied from consultancy to performing major tasks in a close partnership. The waste owner can focus on its own operation and business and we can handle the market and the product into the end users. So thanks a lot for your attention. This is uh, me and uh, my uh, manager in Vietnam that is leading the office we have there. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you, Turlay. And then next, 
uh, we're going to shift again gears. We go to the last group, and then we have uh, Jan and Ultinen telling about the river recycle and how river cleaning can be uh, as a free service. Jan, over to you. Thanks, Amit. Hello, everyone. Our company, River Recycle, cleans the rivers, recycles the plastic, and provides waste management. My name is Janne Nuutinen, and I'm a CEO of River Recycle. Uh, first, uh, a few words about the problem. Uh, about 90% of all the plastic waste that reaches the world's oceans gets flushed through the rivers, littering, wind flow waste, industrial waste, and municipal waste. Uh, once the plastic gets into sea, it decomposes very, very slowly. And uh, if current pollution levels continue, plastic will outweigh fish in the ocean by 2050. So who we are? Uh, our key, uh, key team consists of uh, 12 individuals who bring on board significant experience, experience and expertise in their respective fields. The headquarters are based in Helsinki and Singapore. Uh, local operations are managed in India, Indonesia, Thailand, uh, Philippines, Nigeria, and Vietnam by local team members. Uh, we are a startup and uh, established uh, about two years ago. And uh, our second largest shareholder is Lamor Corporation, also a Finnish company. Uh, Lamor is a global leader in, in marine oil spill recovery and the references include the deep water horizon cleanup in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, our goal is, is stop to over 60% uh, of ocean plastic accumulation by establishing 500 river cleaning and plastic recycling points of the banks of the world's most polluting rivers. We have developed a global river cleaning as a free service business model and the system which removes plastic waste from heavily polluted rivers. We clean the rivers of plastic by creating a sustainable circular business that uses the plastic as a raw material. Uh, this business model aims to create value for waste in rivers to finance the cleanup. Waste value creation is achieved by using plastic to oil technologies and selling it as a raw material comparable to the current virgin fossil feedstock. Uh, during a dry season, addi additional feedstock can be sourced from local landfills and or established a land-based collection system. Uh, today, uh, the project development of River Recycle uh, covers nine countries with help of a dedicated team of professionals are on the world. Uh, currently in India, uh, River Recycle is installing a project that will clean up the Miti River in central Mumbai, and our team expect, expects to catch up to 50 tons of plastic waste daily and preventing it from flowing into the ocean. Uh, we also are building a project in the Sitarum River, Indonesia. The Sitarum River is one of the most polluted rivers of the planet. Uh, the river running through the suburbs and, and, and slums of Jakarta, and it's partially covered by a plastic layer. Uh, the project is expected to retrieve between 70 to 200 tons of plastic waste from this heavily polluted river on a daily basis. So what we are offering uh, to the communities and municipalities and the cities, uh, we will uh, take care of funding, uh, arrange for the manufacture, transport and installation of the river cleanup unit, arrange for the installation of the pyrolysis unit with the technology providers, arrange for necessary trainings to operate and maintain machinery and uh, handle the sale of pyrolysis oil produced. Uh, so what we are looking for, uh, we're looking for a dirty rivers uh, with, with uh, high volumes of uh, floating plastic. And also that there should be a local interest in the river being cleaner. Uh, 
and uh, also uh, alternative feedstock and the local partner. And uh, uh, actually, the uh, local partner should operate uh, or is working towards uh, zero waste to landfill policy. Uh, alternatively, we can implement the project in two ways river cleanup and uh, paralysis, or paralysis unit only. Uh, like in Singapore, for example, there, there are not so much dirty rivers that we can clean up, but we could create a value in circular economy and waste management, as well uh, as, well as field of chemical recycling. Our team has a high level of expertise related to recycling as well as petrochemical, uh, so we are glad to help. So we are very much open to uh, uh, different kind of cooperation and uh, also uh, ready to discuss about the funding and and, uh, and uh, maybe develop a pilot project together. So uh, we look forward to discuss further with uh, with uh, the possible cooperation. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Janne. And uh, thank you also for all the Nordic companies for your excellent presentation. Um, and now we can open the floor then uh, for questions. And uh, you can use the Q&A. Uh, please also then remember to indicate whom your question is for. And while we are waiting the, uh, the questions from the audience, uh, if our Nordic program participants, if you have any questions then for, for IPI or Enterprise Singapore team, uh, please uh, use this opportunity to uh, ask those questions. And there were some questions previously regarding then the, the recording. And uh, for those people who dialed in a little bit later, uh, we are sending this recording and also all the presentation decks for all the participants uh, in 24 hours after this uh, webinar. So you will receive all the materials. Okay. And we have one question uh, coming from the audience for Terra Marine. Uh, does your organic uh, fertilizer include living microorganisms? Purla, do you want to take that? Uh, sorry, can, can you repeat that? Uh, you can see the question from the Q&A, but it's basically, uh, does your organic fertilizer include living microorganisms? Um, no, it doesn't actually. It is um, it is uh, treated with high temperatures to uh, to make a, to make a good hygienization. So in that way, we are we are killing all kind of organisms in the process. Of course, it's um, and it's also difficult to uh, to to export products also with uh, microorganisms in because then you are coming into a very strict regulation in the country you are going to. Uh, and it takes approximately two years actually to, uh, to get that um, a kind of product through a process where you can be able to sell it when we speak about Vietnam. Um, but uh, those kind of products with the bacteria in are, are, are quite, um, uh, popular in Vietnam, so there's a lot of products that actually are sold with uh, with that. So we are working more with uh, some of our liquid fertilizers to add some bacteria into it, actually, to um, to to give them special effects, you can say, but not the, not the pellets actually. Okay. Thank you, Turleib. And then we have one more question. Um, yes, uh, to, um, 
to Mohan, actually, it is uh, absolutely interesting to uh, to look into uh, that kind of uh, waste, uh, food waste, and uh, and uh, to think about exports uh, to uh, to India uh, and, uh, and other countries. So let's follow up with that one. Thank you. And Mohan, was this uh, question only for Terra Marine or for the other companies also? Right. And we will also then post uh, again the links to that meeting scheduler, what you can use and, and book a meeting with our, our uh, program participants to continue the dialogue and, and have a proper one-to-one uh, -one session with them on, on next week or, or after that. So we will post the link again to the chat shortly. Thank you, Chucky. Um, then I saw there was one hand up. Uh, I believe it was Ola. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I question to Lynn. Um, just mm. want, I'm curious to know that if uh, our, our IPI working uh, uh, the same as we experience uh, within the European uh, uh, network, uh, arranging and matchmaking programs, etc., etc. Is uh, uh, Do you follow the same concept uh, within the IPI? Uh, sorry, I'm not able to see the question. Um, is, is it anywhere in the Q&A? No, it's not. It's uh, purely oral. Okay, no, sorry. I, I just... Do you want to repeat the question? Yes, I do. Uh, do you uh, organize matchmaking programs uh, following the same uh, uh, pattern that uh, we have in, in, in mm -hmm. your sister organization in Europe? They okay, we have people. partners um, in, in different parts of Europe, uh, of course, uh, with the largest network um, called the Enterprise Europe Network. So we do have our brokerage events um, organized with different network partners, including those from the Nordics. And um, of course, I think uh, if you're looking at the larger, larger platform, um, the one I've mentioned earlier on, Tech Innovation, um, if you're targeting at the Sing Singapore audience, uh, particularly so that could be um, a, a near-term opportunity for you to showcase your um, technologies in this platform if uh, you're looking to work with partners here from the industry to commercialize them. Yep. No, okay. that's why I'm asking because I've taken part in several uh, uh, occasions at the European network and that works very well. So uh, might be I do. Yeah, we can have a separate conversation uh, regarding this. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Great, thank you, Linda. And we have Mohan again. Um, I'm not sure what's this question for Terra Marine or for other companies. Okay, and we have one more question here on, on a Q&A. Um, what is a comfortable budget slash investment to start a pilot test bed to trial of feasibility of solutions in Singapore environment? Uh, the scale of the project seems big as introduced. I'm not sure to who this question was for. Perhaps Terence, or if you have any any uh, range examples about different uh, feasibility studies, um, pilot test bed trials in Singapore based on what you have seen? Mm. Uh, it, it's a I, fairly big question, but. <laughs> yes, actually it's, it's quite a broad question. Um, yeah. I might not be best place to answer this because uh, I'm more of a markets person. I think if uh, this anonymous attendee might like to reach out separately, I could check with uh, my colleagues who are maybe in the infrastructure services or the relevant um, industry to, yeah. to provide a, an estimate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Therese, maybe you can uh, you can provide uh, your email address as an answer sure. for this, and, and then hopefully can sure. take the conversation from there. Thank you. 
All right. Thanks. All right. And then Imar had a question. Imar, you raised your hand. You are muted. And, uh, and just a comment on, on the, the microbe uh, biology in the fertilizer. In our solution, we only go up to 70 degrees and keep the microbiology living in our fertilizer bio, uh, bio fertilizer. That's just a comment. Okay, thank you. All right. And um, do we have any other questions from the audience? I can see there's one hand raised from Riku. Okay, hi, this is Riku Mäkälä from Embassy of Finland and Sami's team of the Nordic Innovation House. So actually my question to both IPI and ESG is that um, now we have promising Nordic technology companies for waste related issues, water, waste, food issues. So how do you see opportunities for these companies and should they contact first you or Nordic Innovation House when they are trying to move forward? with Singapore and Singaporean related opportunities. For example, the Middle Eastern opportunity that IPI mentioned earlier in this call. Yeah, so I, I think um, the opportunities just doesn't stop here um, from this event. So of course, um, the immediate um, uh, follow-up could be uh, meetings arranged between the uh, Nordic participants and interested um, Singapore companies. So beyond that, um, I mentioned that we have uh, the innovation marketplace. So I would strongly encourage the Nordic participants to post your technology offer on this marketplace. And um, each technology offer is valid for two years. So that can give you the, the extended opportunity to generate new interest from um, interested companies both from Singapore and outside Singapore who may be interested to partner you on any co-development projects. So um, that could be one. And of course, I mentioned earlier on, tech innovation, uh, that would be one um, happening in September this year. And following that in November, there's a switch event um, also happening organized by Singa uh, Enterprise Singapore. So um, please keep a lookout for all these upcoming events. So um, they would be, uh, I think sufficient um, uh, for, for this year to keep you busy in looking for partners. Oh, I hope uh, that answers the question, Riku. Yeah, maybe, yes, thank I, you. maybe I can add on. Uh, thanks, Lin, for providing the inputs. Um, so I think apart from uh, Lin's suggestion, uh, basically because of the immense attention paid to uh, the overarching sustainability and circular economy uh, topic, um, actually we are also encouraging uh, a lot of Singapore companies to... Um, uh, find out where exactly they stand uh, when it comes to their tech capabilities. I mean, I think um, within the whole region, Southeast Asia, uh, similarly, there is a lot of attention on this topic as well. So uh, by understanding first uh, where our companies stand themselves, uh, I guess, as well as at the same time, getting a hold of maybe certain demand drivers in the region, uh, another type of opportunities will happen such that um, Singapore companies could uh, undergo core development projects to perhaps address um, the needs, be it, you know, in Singapore or within the region itself. Yeah, so, so these are the kind of um, um, opportunities we are looking at. Um, just also a heads up to uh, all of us here, um, Enterprise Singapore will be actually launching some what we call a enterprise sustainability program that will support uh, local enterprises in their endeavors to move towards sustainable practices and sustainability. Yeah. So actually this will be uh, further announced uh, with details um, uh, in the upcoming months. Yep. Yeah, and something else to also add on to what uh, Terence has mentioned, um, a, a lot of projects um, that companies are interested in from Singapore need not be implemented within Singapore because companies themselves have also investments in um, other parts outside Singapore, um, uh, for example, different countries within Southeast Asia. 
So that means um, it will give um, uh, the Nordic companies opportunities for them to um, work in overseas projects outside Singapore with the Singapore company. Good. Thanks. So we have the name, we have the list of uh, all the presenters today. We have uh, the short profiles as well. I mean, uh, Rolf Lin and I, I believe, as and when we uh, come across opportunities, uh, I think we will be more happy to make connections to do a matching. Yeah. Thank you, Darren Salinda. And we also highly recommend companies to submit your, your needs to the IPR platform because then your information will remain on the database for the two for two years. And yeah, uh, it's renewable, renewable. Yeah. And uh, and uh, of course, this program is just the first touch point uh, for Singapore and Southeast Asia market. So there will be hopefully many additional conversations. Uh, after this one as well. I saw um, Riku raised your hand again. Yes, so thank you so much, Lynn and Terence. So I would like to add here that this is our curated portfolio of companies who have solutions for wage traded opportunities and uh, solutions. So all Singaporean and nearby country companies, we are happy to connect you with also other potential solutions if you so wish. So please stay in contact with Sami from Nordic Innovation House and the Nordic countries, including Finland, Sweden, Norway, Iceland, Denmark, who are involved with this. And then also with Lunne and Terence from Singaporean party. So we are able to connect you for many other opportunities also outside of this scope. Yeah, and one very convenient way to stay in touch with us is to subscribe our newsletter. Uh, we are sending that once a month, so not, not spamming. And that's, that's a good source of information about our upcoming activities, our members, and uh, uh, what else Nordic community has been uh, doing in Singapore and Southeast Asia. So that's that's very convenient uh, way. Okay. And if we don't have any more questions from our audience or then from our Nordic participants for, for our Singaporean partners today, uh, I believe that we can wrap up the session. And uh, again, special big thanks for Terence and Linda from IPI and Enterprise Singapore. It's always a pleasure uh, to collaborate with you. And uh, we hope that this is just the first step for many upcoming collaboration projects in the near future. So with that, thank you again for everybody for dialing in today. Stay safe and bye-bye. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, have a good day. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.